Good morning. Thank you for joining the webinar this morning. My name is Jim Haldeman, and I am the business development manager here uh, for instrumentation at Lessman Instrument Company. This morning, we want to take about 30 minutes and review a new product to the Siemens family of radar level transmitters uh, to discuss where these may be used um, and review you know, the differences between this product and you know, the legacy Siemens radar level transmitters that you may have been uh, using for some time. So uh, we're here trying to educate you on this new product. So it should take about 30 minutes and then we'll have a brief question and answer session when we're completed. So let's begin. I should note as well, if you have questions, just please type them in the questions uh, section and they'll come up on my screen and I will make sure I answer those questions. We'll also have questions and answers at the end. So let's go. So this is the current portfolio of Siemens products. And the product that we're gonna be talking about today is the LR 100 compact series, which on this graphic is located about uh, five or six o'clock. Um, so basically in the back row to the left is where it started with the LR 200 series. And then it moved towards the right there where we came out with the LR 250s with the horn. And then we introduced the LR 250 FEA or HEA, which is the um, hygienic encapsulated antennas for food and dairy. Um, we then um, offered the flange encapsulated, which was a flange transmitter that would, again, eliminate the horn extending into the vessel. So, again, we'll be focusing on the, on the LR100, but recently uh, Siemens has introduced the LR250 PLA, which is on the lower row to the left. That uh, PLA obviously stands for plastic. And so that product there would be the LR250 series, which is designed specifically to be used in uh, conditions where corrosive chemicals might be used. So that's a, another product that's been introduced and we'll be talking about that on a future website. So this is the entire portfolio of <clears throat> basically liquids and a few solid radar level transmitters. I apologize, you didn't see this screen. So here is the review again of the, of this, family of liquid level transmitters by Siemens. And back here on the left is where it, st it all started with the LR200. Then we moved through the development this way where we introduced the LR250 with the, um, <clears throat> the horn. Then we introduced the LR250 with the encapsulated antenna. Here's the plastic one I referred to. These are the two products we're gonna be talking about today here around the five o'clock area, which is the LR100 compact series. So this new technology, this LR100, it's gonna feature Bluetooth wireless technology for configuration and setup. Um, quick and easy setup with the mobile IQ app. And it also provides a narrow beam, no fine tuning uh, software or uh, configuration method. A nice feature of this product is there's zero blanking distance, which means you can maximize the size or the height of your tank if you're using a small vessel. And you can see the accuracy is two millimeters of accuracy, uh, which is gonna um, be quite accurate and allow you to see exactly it is, you know, the level that you're looking for. The unit operates with an 80 gigahertz custom radar microchip. This allows for more accuracy and allows you to work in some turbulent conditions and <clears throat> would allow you to see through some condensate that could be a, an issue with traditional ultrasonic transducers when you have high humidity or where you have cold air temperatures and warm water temperatures, which can create condensate, which can build up on the flat face of a transducer, ultrasonic transducer. So this new technology with the radar and this custom chip should allow you to circumvent those problems and allow you for streamlined level measurement. Again, reviewing the features and the functions, the Bluetooth wireless technology with the Citrans Mobile IQ app on your mobile device 
We'll spend the second half of this brief presentation showing you what that app looks like and how it's going to work. But the hope is that it saves you time. You don't need any special instruments. You don't need a, <clears throat> a third party handheld. You don't need um, software to program the unit. IR accuracy allows us to measure over the entire range with zero blanking distance. This custom chip should allow us to actually go in and configure the unit one time and not have to go back at a later date and do any fine tuning. The unit is capable for digitalization, uh, which means it's gonna be a two wire heart device, heart 7.0, and also available for Modbus for uh, outputs. Essentially this family of transmitters call it the LR100 series, which will have three different members to it currently. The general specifications are it works for minus 40 degrees through 176 degrees uh, um, Fahrenheit. It has the approvals for gas and dust, uh, FM class one div one, FM class one div two approvals on two of the three family members. And then it's got an optional uh, submergence shield which you can see there on the image to the left uh, for um, transducers that will be flooded frequently or, or subject to just things falling up on them to protect the transducer so it lasts longer. Bluetooth wireless technology, again, that is a free app which is available for the Google users as well as the users of Apple devices. And today uh, when I show you the images, that'll be off the, the Apple device. The units are available with process connections uh, on two of the three. They have an inch and a half NPT process connection, um, as well as a top thread one inch process connection. And I'll show you some more images, but on the two in front of you, you can see the, the image on the right has the one inch top thread one inch uh, process connection. And uh, although you can't, and yeah, the bottom of it's got the inch and a half as well, whereas the one on the left just has the top one inch process connection. And like I mentioned previously, available with heart. Applications for this technology are quite um, a variety, basically chemical applications, general industrial aggregate and, and wastewater. So chemicals, you know, one of the advantages potentially is, is smaller vessels. You know, in the past, we've had the transmitters that'll work uh, in this application, um, but because of the blanking distance, you would lose, you know, a, a significant portion of the availability of the tank up on top. So with zero blanking distance in a smaller vessel, this will allow you to measure basically right up to the top. Also, you can use this transmitter with plastic tanks remotely or externally mounting the transmitter above the, the top of the tank and still see the liquid. The radar will shoot through the, the plastic tank and give you the level display. Uh, automotive, plastics, electronics, power, inventory management, it'll work on liquids as well as solids, which means you can use it in aggregate. Um, you know, it'll work with, with some dust. It'll shoot through it because of the 80 gigahertz frequency. And then of course, uh, municipal wastewater, clean water applications. Uh, we see this as a potential solution. And, and Siemens has other solutions as well, of course, that we've been using in most of these applications, but this product fills a niche where it's a lower cost, doesn't give you a, a local display, and basically is a two wire loop power device trying to address the part of the market where in the past we might have come in with a more costly solution. The LR100 also has the QR code on it. You can see the little image here. If you scan that with the software, this will allow you to get the manual, uh, download any certificates. Um, you can see on the lower right there, or on the middle image, it gives you the complete model number and the serial number as well. So uh, that's what the QR code is used for, and it's common amongst all Siemens products, not just this product. Uh, I was out the other day with a customer, and he was curious as to the approvals. So using this app, we were able to get to the certificates, and I could show him the FM approved documents uh, literally in the parking lot. So it's kind of a nice way to get to the, the information.
Okay, what does the uh, portfolio look like and what kind of accessories do they have? Well, some customers, although this transmitter, which is shown here in the second image to the left, from the left, it, it shows the transmitter with the one inch process connection. Well, some customers might want to actually see the level remotely on some type of display. So to the left there, we have the Citrens RD, which stands for Remote Display 150. This is a two wire loop power device that you would wire between the transmitter and your control system, which would allow you to graphically see what the transmitter is, is outputting. This is a heart multi-drop device, which means you can wire up to four transmitters into this one device. And you can only display one of the variables at a time. You can see on the image, it shows you sensor three. So you'd have on display 64.8% of sensor three. If you wanted to know what was on sensor one, you'd have to uh, toggle through the arrows to get to that sensor. Um, so that is a two wire loop power device. The transmitter you can see to the right of that, there's some hardware, which we'll show you as well a little bit later. Um, you can uh, mount this like you typically would mount other Siemens ultrasonic transducers. You can see you can also use them on the easy aimers where that one inch process connection will thread into bottom of that pipe, which would allow you primarily more on solids applications where you could angle that transmitter um, to work for any angle of repose that you might experience off of a uh, solid type application. So the family as it consists right now is the LR100, the LR110, and the LR120. The differences between the three are the LR100 will measure up to 26 feet and that has an eight degree beam angle that is two wire, four to 20, and that does not have any approvals. So if you do not need any FM or, or um, uh, other approvals, then this would be fine. Uh, it gives you the Bluetooth and allows you to get that output via four to 20, does not have heart, um, and it has an eight degree beam angle. The LR110, that'll measure up to 49 feet. That has a eight degree beam angle as well. You can see the accuracy there is 0 0.08 inches. That transmitter will allow you to not only have the two wire four to 20, but that'll give you the heart 7.0 and or the Modbus output. And that has full gas and dust FM approvals. The LR120 will uh, work in applications measuring up to 98 feet. That one has just the single thread, one inch process connection, has the same accuracy spec as the LR110, has a four degree beam angle, and has all the approvals as the LR110. Cost-wise, you're looking, the LR100 is the least costly, the LR110 is in the middle and the LR120 is the more expensive because of these advantages of the narrower beam angle. I mentioned earlier, one of the potential advantages for this technology is it can shoot through plastic vessels. Here's just an image showing uh, the transmitter mounted above a tote and the customer um, basically wants to validate what the level is of the product in the tote without penetrating the top of the top of the tote. There may not be a process connection there to install the transmitter. So that's why this um, is going to be an advantage using this technology. Here's another uh, example of, of some testing that had been done showing you here on the upper left. It was a larger plastic vessel. I believe this was polypropylene. And you can see one of the caveats here is mount the device as close as possible to the tank. You can see here in the center graphic, the echo profile where the uh, transducer shot through the plastic and you can see this large blue curve, which is the echo profile from the liquid inside of that vessel. And you can see the large black marker that uh, basically said, yes, that is 
that is indeed my level. I'm not going to worry about the, the small uh, plastic echo. I'm going to fo focus on that higher signal liquid, and that is indeed my level. And you can see down below, it was a very small plastic vessel where they used the LR110, and they mounted that above there. And again, you were able to see on the small echo curve to the right that they had a, a, a pretty strong echo profile where the blue line and the red line intersect uh, is, is the liquid level. And then of course, solids applications here, they're showing it using the Easy Aimer, which allows them to angle that transmitter at a specific angle of repose to try and maximize the feedback to the transmitter so that it can give you a reliable measurement. So now I want to kind of talk about what the app looks like <clears throat> and how you'd be able to use that to set the unit up. So this is a graphic as to what that app is going to look like. And I'm going to now proceed. I've actually gone through and created screenshots for using an Apple phone, um, how you'd get the app, how you'd set it up, configure it, and some of the feedback you can get. So the rest of the presentation will be focusing on that. So if you go to the app store in your off your phone or your, your uh, tablet and you type in Citrans Mobile IQ, it'll bring up this image here to the right, which shows you the Citrans Mobile IQ app. You download it and then on your phone, it's going to show you this icon here, which is the app on the phone. When you click on that app, it's going to start opening up an image, which looks like the image on the far right, telling you you're starting to begin the app. Once you're into the app, it's going to start scanning for the device. You can see on the bottom here, there's a little switch for demo mode. What that allows you to do is actually uh, use the software on the phone without back basically speaking to a transmitter. So if you wanted to download the app today for free, you can, and you can actually get familiar with the app, putting it in the demo mode because you do not need a transmitter to actually play with the device. So you can see in the second image here, I actually put it on demo mode so that you can see on the top under Bluetooth devices, it's simulating that it sees a transmitter. On the left, you can see there's a power strength bar, which is the signal strength indicator for the Bluetooth between your phone and the transmitter. And then it's going to bring up the, the model number and anything that you might have tagged on there. It's going to ask you for a four digit PIN number. This is a PIN number that is shipped with every transmitter. And in order to connect to it with Bluetooth, you have to enter the PIN number. So that's what will come up on your screen next. And then once you've done that, the screen on the far right is essentially what they call the cockpit, which is going to show you the basic parameters of the transmitter. It's going to give you an image as to what it looks like. It's going to give you the model number, it's going to give you the serial number, it's going to give you the firmware that uh, it's speaking, it's going to give you the status, which is going to typically be a green box with a good signal in it, and it's going to give you some values down below with regards to what it's seeing in its current situation, essentially out of the box. So scrolling through, just to highlight a few things, the image on the far left, you can see on the bottom has three icons. It has a home, a chart, and a setup icon. Those are your three general uh, tabs that you'll be using in the programming of the unit. But again, you can see on the far left is the dashboard. Now this I'm out of demo mode and I've actually, um, I'm actually live now and I'm actually talking to a transmitter. Um, you can see, um, uh, on the, on the third image there where it shows you the sensor and you can see how the Bluetooth device, the signal is now in a red configuration. That's because I only have two of four bars illuminated. So it's showing you it's still connected to the transmitter, but that the signal strength isn't what it was uh, initially. And that's because I was further away from the device. So essentially what you're gonna do then is just follow the setup screen. So like I showed you earlier, you're going to click on this sensor icon and it's gonna bring up the device cockpit. And in this case, you'll see down below the current values are in inches. 
the demo mode had it in meters. Okay, so I would just continue to scroll through my screen and it's gonna ask me some questions. The first question under the identification tab is, what do you wanna call this transmitter? Is it uh, level transmitter one? Is it level, level transmitter two? In the, my case, I call it level, uh, I call it demo 196. So that's what I've tagged this transmitter. I told it that I'm using it on water. I've told it where it's gonna be installed. This is my basement test. And the last one, I have just put a message in there and I type good morning. Okay, so these are the different types of messages that you can put into this unit just to tag it. The reason that is important, obviously, is you can have multiple transmitters at the same time, and you wanna make sure that you're speaking to the proper device. So um, that way, when you tag it demo 196, you know on the screen when you, when you bring it up and you click on demo 196, you're talking to the right transmitter. So setting up the level now. So now you can see on the bottom of that screen on the left, I'm now in the setup mode and I'm gonna go into level and I'm going to basically answer the questions there. Level units, operation, uh, is it a liquid or a solid and so on and so forth. So you can see off to the right there, I'm gonna choose inches in the drop down bar, which I've done. So after I've chosen inches, I'm going to then choose level. You can see you can measure level, space, or distance. I'm going to choose level. And then I'm going to choose liquid. You have the option of liquid or solid. I'll choose liquid for my example. And then I'm gonna choose what type of a vessel it is. Because this was a demo, um, I chose the demo mode. If you're doing it as a storage tank, a process vessel, a wet well, plastic tank, you would simply choose which vessel represents your application. And then you're gonna choose the low calibration point, which is the distance to the bottom. In this case, it was only 20 inches. And then you're gonna choose the distance to the top. And I wanted to measure all the way to the transducer, so I put in zero inches, meaning zero dead band. So then I went back to my cockpit, you can see I hit the home button down below, it gets you back to the cockpit. And in my example, it was giving me on the bottom the current values. So I was seeing 10 inches, um, gives me the level, also gives me the distance, which is nice because if I wanna confirm that, I can just put a tape measure and measure the distance between the transducer and the top of the water. And I can see that it's accurate. It's gonna give me a confidence level going to give me the current loop output and it's going to be the percentage of range based on how I've had it scaled. So it's going to give you everything you need to know regarding the output right here on the bottom of that home screen. So if you want to go in and do some additional um, setup, you can see back here I'm in the setup page. You can go in and, and you can change, for example, here's security. If I wanted that pin number that I lost, uh, it's going to give me the pin number here. Going to give me some diagnostics it's going to tell you that the the unit is okay and um this is a key one here you can see under this diagnostic menu is factory reset um sometimes maybe you have one of these on the shelf you don't know if it was used before if it was configured before um or maybe on the home screen you have a red indicator meaning uh, you have a it's for some reason it isn't, it isn't uh, working properly and you want to do a factory reset you just click on this factory reset button follow the menu in through it, and then you'll just uh, hit restore, and you'll restore everything back to the main factory default, and then you can just start over. So that works pretty nice. You can click under echo profile um, and do some additional um, um, calibration there. I'm, I'm show you what that looks like a little bit later. So you can do confidence levels, signal strength, and then, so now, I wanna to jump to this last icon, which I haven't addressed yet, which is the center icon, which is the charts. So if you graphically wanna see what this thing looks like, you can click on charts and you can see multitude of charts. In the example here, I'm gonna click on level um, in, that, in that this um, 
diagnostics, I guess it'd be the third one from the left. You can see where it's clicked on level, but on the, on the one on the far right, I wanna see the level and the distance represented graphically. You can see in the background, I now have two graphs. One is showing me the level, one is showing me the distance. Here you can see that same graph where instead of choosing uh, level and distance, I chose, uh, excuse me, this is level and distance. It's the one I had before, I apologize. Um, but here below, you can see to the right, now I want level and confidence level, right? So you can simply pick and choose what you want to see uh, representative of what you're actually measuring. Here I've got diagnostics and confidence. So again, I've got level and confidence. Here I've got loop current and percent of range. Here I've got loop current and distance. So this confidence level will really be handy if I wanted to know, boy, am I seeing a good echo profile? How I've played with this in my demo is if I actually put my hand on the transducer and I move it slightly where I have a, an angle of repose, you'll see that confidence level go down because it's not measuring off a flat um, surface of water. Um, so that was a real interesting experiment that I was able to run. And this is what my, my demo looked like, okay? So I simply had an LR120 hanging from a tripod uh, over this bucket of water where I had, you know, uh, that 20, 20 inches was my low level uh, up to the face, and then I was measuring the distance. So that's what it looked like. And then to the right here, you can see that echo profile, what it looked like, right? So you can see um, in, the, in the bottom left is my zero and zero, meaning uh, zero distance and uh, above that is the, the the percent of confidence and you can see that I have the blue curve there which is the echo profile and I'm only seeing the one echo to the right there which is obviously the liquid level and that's at about 18 inches um, which is the distance you can see on the upper center it tells you distance was 17.41 inches and it was very confident what I did for experimentation then as I put in a, a little piece of metal um, angle iron here and I wanted to see how that affected the output of the transmitter so you can see on that echo profile now we've got two echoes right we've got the smaller echo which is kind of in the center of that profile and that is actually the metal angle iron there that it sees but it's focusing on the liquid level which has the higher output or higher um, echo and you can see with that level marker stayed at uh, 18 inches 17.46 so you can see how the unit saw past that uh, metal um, uh, obstacle there and I didn't have to do any programming to do to, for that to happen it actually saw the unit uh, on its own um, so this I just refreshed it to the left and you can see that it it didn't do anything it didn't make any changes the, 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 um, you can also do false echo suppression, which is what you can do on higher level Siemens products where if there's obstacles in the vessel and you don't want them to show up as echo profiles, when the vessel is empty, you can run the false echo suppression program from the app and it'll create a various curves which would eliminate any of those from being considered um, echoes of level. And another nice feature of this app is you can actually go in and um, get those manuals, just like I referred to earlier when I was um, talking about it, where you can click on it, you can get the certificates, you can get the model numbers, serial numbers, so on and so forth. And then to disconnect from the device, you just click on the uh, disconnect button right here and the device will disconnect and you'll no longer be talking to the device. So essentially that's been 30 minutes. That is my um, my presentation. It was just hopefully an overview as to this product. I haven't had any uh, questions pop up on my screen. So I'm just gonna unmute all. If anyone has any questions, uh, feel free to ask them. Okay, I'm not hearing any questions. I believe I've unmuted. So if, if this is not working audibly wise, if you have questions, uh, feel free to contact me at jimh at lessman.com. I'd be more than happy to answer any questions you might have and review any part of the presentation um, that you might have questions on. So with that being said, 
as I have no questions, I'm going to end the presentation. Thank you and have a wonderful day.